Hi everyone, I'm Kelly O'Horo, and this is Adaptable Behavior Explained. Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining this episode of our show. Uh, part of this series of the Counselor Cafe, which is where I get together with other therapists uh, and counselors, and we discuss important mental health issues and societal topics that are plaguing all of us, and hopefully we can help our viewers in a collective way. Today, I am very excited to bring to you a couple other uh, therapists and friends of mine, Ratna Ganala, who works with me at Infinite Healing and Wellness. She is a rock star, awesome human and therapist and new mom, and Jamie Castillo, who is the owner of Find Your Shine Therapy in Tempe, Arizona, and another rock star EMDR therapist uh, and friend. So thank you both so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about yourselves? Ratna, why don't you go first and just why this topic and episode were, was a passion for you? Oh my gosh, I don't know if I could say enough. <laughs> um, I'm a new mom. I have a 10-month-old son. And so this is like a very fresh journey for me. Um, and I was just amazed at how much I didn't know or realize, even though people probably talk to me about it. Um, so I guess for me, I just wanted to normalize that experience for other moms, you know, that they're not going through whatever they're going through alone. It's not something that's just happening to them. Cause that's kind of how I felt in the beginning until I started connecting with some of my mom friends and things like that. So that was my biggest motivation Thank for you. being here. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And as, as a friend and colleague, I've seen such a, an evolution in you uh -huh. with your levels of authenticity and transparency. I think nothing really just hits home the reality button, like having a child. Oh, so I really, sure. I, I, I've loved watching that personally with you. Uh, Jamie, how about you? What, what, does, what made you decide this was a good topic for you to talk about with us today? Well, I too am a new mom. I have a 16 month old and my husband and I joke about the fact that she came in like a wrecking ball. She sort of blew up everything. Little that, Miley Cyrus <laughs> <yes>. action. <laughs> all the norms, all the expectations, everything that was uh, a norm for us was just sort of exploded and imploded. And um, I too felt very ill prepared. I am a therapist. I had knowledge, logical knowledge of yeah. postpartum shifts and the fact that change is hard and babies are hard and was completely blindsided still. And so my thought is that if I can have all of that information and still be blindsided, lots of other people can too. And so I too am here to help normalize some of the shifts that I experienced because I wish I had had more information. I, I totally can appreciate that. For for those of you who don't know, I too am a mom. My youngest though is 22. My oldest is going to be 33 actually next week. Mm -hmm. And I also have five grandchildren. So I bring a, a, a pretty robust mm -hmm. amount of experience. But being a new mom, although I remember so much of it likely trauma-informed so deeply, uh, vividly, I don't remember it like it was yesterday in that like I said, my youngest is 22, but I didn't have a normal pregnancy and delivery and all of that either. And I also wanted to be able to share with our listeners, when you have more than one child, some of the dynamics that, uh, that impact us. And so this will be a two-part episode uh, because I think we could probably talk about each one of these topics we're going to address today literally in its own episode, and perhaps we, we will even do that. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So let's talk first about the things nobody warned us about, right? Where was the label? Where was that? <laughs> you might want to take this pretest before you decide to have a child. And, uh, and actually, I think, you know, Ratna, you and I have discussed mm -hmm. before, there's a lot of social pressure for mm -hmm. women oftentimes to have children. And I think so many women have kids because they're supposed to or because it's part of their culture, whether it's familial, religious, you know, uh, whatever the reason may be. And I think one of the cautionary things we want to talk about is the shoulds and supposed tos about even deciding to be a mom at the, in the first place. So what would you say about that, Ratna? Yeah, I, I want to echo what you said, Kelly. I think so much pressure societally. And then me being Indian, definitely a cultural aspect to it, right? That's such a big deal. Even that pressure to get married young and things like that so that you can have children, right? Is just considered such a big and important part of life. And after doing it, I'm so glad that I really wanted it. I really wanted it for myself. 
Um, and I'm grateful for that because after having done it, um, if I had done it for anybody else, right, because of who was in my ear or to make other people happy, I think I would have had a lot of resentment about that. Makes, that. that makes so much sense. Yeah. Way too much work for, for right. doing it for Right. This else. isn't something yeah. you half-ass commit to. I oh, mean, this absolutely. reminder every moment of every day that yeah. it's never going away. And even when they're adults, I mean, my adult children, I, people go, oh, it's going to be so much easier when they're adults. And I'm, I, I think to the, about that. I go, um, it's way more serious problems typically. And you are 0% you have zero control over any of the outcomes. So you're just watching, you know, sometimes trains just about to crash and you are like, wow, there is not a damn thing I can do about it. So it's a never ending, relentless concern when you love your children. And so I think that's an incredibly important point to bring up because it's not going away. Jamie, how about you? What are your thoughts on the decision to have a child? So my husband and I tried to get pregnant and pursued fertility treatments for about four years prior to finally getting and keeping a pregnancy. So we, we had a lot of loss along the way. And it, you know, it's, it's sort of when it, when it's something that feels so out of reach, it almost in my experience makes you want it more. It, 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 you know, the drive to just have a baby at the end of it was so strong for me. And I think that in itself created a little bit more shame when I had her and things felt really, really bad and awful and wrong. And I have a distinct memory of my husband saying, what's wrong? Like, we wanted this. She's here. This is our end goal. And I was like, I don't know. I just Mm -hmm. feel bad. And so um, I can relate to, you know, the, I can't imagine what it would have been like had I fallen pregnant by accident and was sort of on the fence about, could I do this? Could I not? Like I was prepared. I have resources. I have support. I am older. So I have my shit together a little bit. <laughs> um, I can't imagine. And I had the thought so many times, like I can't imagine what um, other women might be going through who were, who were less prepared or less mm-hmm enthusiastic about having a child. Well, and the powerlessness that is part of, you know, we grow up thinking, oh, I'm just going to, when I'm ready, I'm going to choose to have a child and it's going to be just, we're going to just do that. And in in my experience was a little bit like that. Uh, But the powerlessness that happens for someone who thinks that it's going to be just that way. And then lo and behold, four years later, it's almost like something on a to-do list that's a anguish grasping Mm -hmm. and so helpless and so powerless. So thank you for sharing that. I think that could be its own show for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say that my, uh, my youngest is seven years younger than the next oldest. And so even though my husband and I were only married for at that point a year, it was, it was like a decision of, do we want to have a child of our own? And if so, we better get to it or we're going to have two completely separate families with more than a seven-year birth order spread. And as it is, we're going to have 10 years of an only, or, you know, seven years of an only child at this point. So what, what, let's get to it. And so we were ready. I stopped using birth control. And I, I find out that I'm pregnant by actually having two lemon drops up at a bar in Washington with my cousin. And I went straight to the bathroom to throw up. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? And my body was pregnant and my baby was like, no, we're not doing that anymore. And I just went and retched in the bathroom and my cousin looked at me and she's like, you're pregnant. I was like, shut up. We had literally stopped using birth control for one month. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that was fast. And I found, I went home and took the test and I, I, I just started crying and I looked at my husband. I was like, oh, I, oh, oh, this is, oh, I don't think so. I don't know what to do with this. And he goes, you can't say that. We, we, you can't say you're scared or whatever. He was so upset that my reaction was terrified because it was happening. And even though I decided for it to happen, that reality of, oh, wow, everything is going to turn upside down. And I decided that for myself. So, I mean, everyone has a different experience for sure. When you find out you're pregnant, I mean, what was that like for you, Jamie? Well, we had a a, a rocky road. Um, But I think to point out, to piggyback off of something that you said, I heard the quote, pregnancy and motherhood is like the single biggest juxtaposition in the world. And, And it is that, right? Like there's so much both and I'm I'm terrified and excited I'm grateful and grieving I'm 
you know, it's just this, this big contradiction that exists all at once in my experience for so many. I think for most, I mean, I, we we can never say all, but I think for most that would be true. I mean, if we take it seriously and Mm -hmm. we're in our body, this is going to be a big freaking deal. (laughs) Like no matter what way you cut it, it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. So to your original question, (laughs) we had, we, I too thought like, oh, I'll just go off birth control when I'm ready and then we'll have a baby in like nine months or so. <laughs> so the years went by and I was like, okay, there's something going on here. So we pursued fertility treatment and actually fell pregnant on the first uh, IUI procedure is what we did. And so I felt really excited. I was like, well, this is just the ticket. This is just what we needed to do. And that pregnancy ended in miscarriage. And so we were really grieving, but also very hopeful, right? Because we were like, we found something that's the answer. If we just do this fertility treatment, it worked on the first try, um, it'll happen again. And so then, you know, after doing several more IUIs and then moving to IVF and having failed cycles and canceled cycles and more losses, when I finally fell pregnant and it, it lasted, I mean, it was just terror. I just felt panic the entire nine months. Cause you were mm-hmm. impending doom waiting for yeah. the other shoe to drop. I'm Absolutely. sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Can't even imagine. Thank you. Yeah. How about for you, Ratna? Um, I'm like trying to go back to that time. Um, we How associated were you, Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> I was just so focused on Jamie and her story. Um, we, I just, I was kind of in disbelief, you know, we're like, is the test wrong? Like, do we need to, do we need to take another test? So we did. And then we were, we were just really excited. I, I can really relate to what you were saying about that juxtaposition of, of all of these emotions kind of existing at one time. Um, and I think that came for me more later on, but when we found out we were just, we were so excited, nervous a little bit, but mostly well, it's excited. the same, it's yeah. the same chemical, yeah. you know, nervous and excited. Uh-huh. It's just the way we relate to it. Yeah. You go to get on a roller coaster and you're nervous, but then you're on it and you're excited, same chemicals. So yeah, part of it's like the preparedness and what is it that we're looking for? Mm-hmm. And I think I had both. Mm-hmm. And once it settled in. It, it was, it was also more excited. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, there's things that make it not exciting. So even when you chose it and even when you wanted it, so the pregnancy experience, let's talk about that because, you know, some people, they always oh, love being pregnant and it's so fantastic and I would do it all day. And I'm just like, that was just not my experience. I mean, I loathed it all, but maybe a couple of months of being pregnant for, for, uh, for some reasons that we'll talk about. So, so Rana, tell us about your pregnancy experience. Okay, was there anything, me. was there anything noteworthy? Are you one of those? You might hate me. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I'm a, I loved being pregnant, but I was really lucky that for the most part, my, my pregnancy went really smoothly, except for, you know, the typical stuff, like the body aches, the nausea, stuff like that. Sometimes, um, I, I was really fortunate. So yes, please don't, don't hate me. <laughs> That's valid too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's valid, but she sucks. <laughs> and I still love her. <laughs> yeah. I had a different experience. I mean, I, I certainly felt like it could have gone worse. I didn't have, I, so one thing that went really well for me is I didn't have a ton of sickness, like morning mm-hmm. sickness. I felt pretty good in that regard. Um, one thing I didn't like was being unable to breathe. I always felt winded mm. and out of breath toward, toward like six months and on. I peed my pants a lot. <laughs> of course I peed my pants. Everybody my age pees their pants. It's the coolest. That's the best. You're like, I think I have to go. Oh, <laughs> too late. It's like full bladder just released when I sneezed. Awesome. Oh, so man. cool, man. You're at Safeway. <laughs> you pee your pants. Change of plans. Gonna head home now. <laughs> It's like it's you need to wear worst. diapers. It's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Uh, I'll share a little bit about my pregnancy experience because I think there are a lot of viewers who had, you know, really hard times. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that they know, you know, you're not alone in that. Um, so I get pregnant and and I'm healthy the whole time, but I'm I'm sick. So whereas most people are like, how much did you gain? I literally lost 13 pounds when I got pregnant because <clears throat> I threw up for four months all day long. I could not keep anything down. Uh, it was RH negative, so I had to get that RH negative shot. Did you guys have to get yes. that? Yes. That was so painful. Okay, I have a funny story about this <laughs> that maybe I'll tell later. No, tell it now. 
do it. Okay, I mean, that's so I did IVF, right? Mm-hmm. So I injected myself with progesterone and oil shots every day mm-hmm. for months, each cycle. So so I did that a lot. And I remember going in for the RH negative shot, and she was like, have you had these before? And I was like, no. And she goes, okay, they're really painful. So, like, I can do it in your butt or your arm. Like, which do you think? And I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. What do you think? Like, what's less painful? And she said, the butt. And I said, all right, let's do it. And and then she, which is where I gave myself the IVF shots. And so then she she was like, fiddling with the packaging and and I could hear it and I was just bracing myself right like oh this is gonna be so painful and then she's like are you okay and I was like yeah are you gonna do it and she's like it's done and I was like what that was nothing and it and then I realized like it's because basically I felt like my my <laughs> your butt was numb or something <laughs> and I probably developed some kind of callus <laughs> Got it. That was a breeze compared oh to IVF. My gosh. <laughs> well, I won't, I won't, you know, play my little violin then because I was like, what did you just, I like almost had a reaction of swinging and hitting her. It was so painful <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Cause you know, everyone's had shots and why the hell is that thing so painful? What do you think it is? I don't know, man. So. The needle is like this it's, long. It was That's horrible. Oh, it yeah. was horrible. It's, and, and yeah. for those who don't know what that RH factor piece is, it's you carry something that would potentially reject your baby and you would miss carry because it sees it as a foreign object and that the, that it needs to fight. And so when they have that marker in your blood, they do this thing to prevent you from, mm-hmm. you know, miscarrying your, your child. And so I happen to have that one. Mm-hmm. So anyways, uh, thanks for sharing that. So I'm throwing up, you know, for four months, I don't want to use my sick leave because I want to save it for when mm-hmm. I have the child. And so I'm at work and I share an office with this lady. I worked at the YMCA at the time and I am just constantly retching, dry heaving mostly because I can't keep anything down. And she's like, can't you go home? You know, she's so mad at me. I'm disrupting the work environment. And I, and I just said, I don't have the time to burn. And so, you know, there's this whole having to ration your time off so that you can be with your child. And I'm legitimately throwing up all day. And it was just horrible. And so I, I hate the first more than trimester because I don't stop throwing up for that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I end up, um, getting hemorrhoids, which happens to so many people, but we were in the Navy at the time my husband was. And so we're at the Naval War College and there's a, it's a teaching facility. (laughs) And so I go in because I'm just like, these hemorrhoids are so painful. And so I go to get them looked at to find out, is there anything we can do? This is a little bit further along in my pregnancy as he's getting bigger. And they're like, wow, these are some of the worst hemorrhoids I've ever seen. And so can we bring in all the students? And so there's just this, there's just this like, sure, you know, sure. Why not? Let's have everybody look at my ass. Like This isn't vulnerable at all. And also really embarrassing. And so everyone's learning, you know, what do you do? And they're all talking about what they could do to make the pressure relieve and all this other stuff. And it was just mortifying. I mean, you just, the humility, like, or the humiliation that you almost feel, Mm -hmm. but also the normalization of there's nothing sacred anymore. Like, you're just ass out, spread, seven people, like, checking everything out. And because it's just part of the gig for once you're pregnant, they're always looking at everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just, I just found it so, so hard. And then I get this other symptom that is only happening for 3% of people, which is a hernia that happened in my labia. So I look like I have this worm, like penis, something on just one side of my body. And I'm just like, and there's, there's veins. I mean, he's nine pounds. So there's veins coming through this labia hernia and it is horrific and it's so painful and it's so ugly and I'm crying in the mirror like what is happening to my body and is it ever going to be normal again and is my husband going to love me anymore that I'm just ruined and you know am I going to have so many stretch marks I mean just all of those pieces so the being pregnant part people have some people have really good experiences but I had a very hard pregnancy and let me it's just so hard. And not, that's not even delivery. <laughs> yeah, it just it completely changes you inside yeah. and out. Right. There's no there's right. no getting around that. So, you know, pregnancy is different for everyone. And and I do have to say that thankfully my symptoms all shifted. You know, my stomach went back. I was very blessed to not have a lot of stretch marks. 
you know, the whole hernia cleared up just by delivering and that was gone immediately. Thank God, because that was so awful and painful. I mean, I thought I was going to have to go have surgery for this thing because it was so Mm -hmm. painful and, you know, everything else cleared up as well. So I don't want to scare people away from ever having a baby, but I do think it's important that we're honest about what can happen as a result of the metamorphosis of converting fuel into a human. I mean, it is a taxing thing for our bodies to go through. And so I think it's important that we're just honest and and transparent about it and that it is a crapshoot about what your experience will be for sure. I really appreciate you guys talking with me about this in our next episode. We're going to talk about the preparation and delivery and a whole bunch of other topics related to being a new mom. So thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I appreciate your time and don't forget to lead with love. It'll never steer you wrong.